Hello everyone, I'm Harry, welcome to my channel and today we're going to look at some of my top favourite riffs from songs that would not be the same without the use of spring reverb. So before we get started, if you like this sound like video at any point, please leave a like, comment and subscribe and hit the little bell notification for me as well. It really does help me out a lot and that way you won't miss out on any of my future uploads. There's going to be affiliate links down in the description to every piece of gear I used in this video and to record my videos. These do help support the channel out further so I'd really appreciate you going to check them out. So like I said, we're going to look at some of my favourite songs or specifically riffs from songs songs that just would not sound the same or be nearly as iconic if it weren't for the use of the spring reverb. Now real spring reverb, like what these original tracks would have used, is usually found inside amplifiers. And you don't usually get a real 100% analog spring reverb with springs in a pedal format. But the reason I wanted to do this video was because I recently got sent the Elements by Anasounds, which is actually a real spring reverb unit for your pedal boards. So it comes with three different tanks that you can mount onto your pedal boards and then a little pedal that controls these as well. So you're actually getting 100% analog real spring reverb but from your pedal board. So say if your amp doesn't have spring reverb or you want more control from your spring reverb, this is a great system. I actually recently did a full demo of the Anasounds elements. So if you'd like to see that, there'll be a link up in the cards in the description and pinned in the comments. So throughout the whole of this video, I'm actually gonna be using the largest tank because that's most accurate to what would have been in most amps actually use spring reverb, but it does come with other tanks that sound equally great. For each song, you'll see the settings of the little control the pedal and you just got to bear in mind that I was using the biggest spring reverb tank available. Any overdrive that you hear from this is coming from the Dane by Thorpe FX and then a little bit of fuzz for one of the songs from the Fallout Cloud by Thorpe FX. So let's get into the first song which is arguably probably the most iconic spring reverb song as well. <laughs> So there you go, instantly recognisable. Most people probably know it from the Pulp Fiction soundtrack, but it's Mizzaloo by Dick Dale, or his rendition of it anyway. With the fast tremolo picking, the overdriven amp tone, and his iconic Stratocaster tone all get as close, but it just would not be the same without the spring reverb. Again, the overdrive time is coming from the Dane by Thorpe FX. I was just on the bridge pickup of the Strat, and that was pretty much it. We have the spring reverb, obviously, from the Anna Sounds. So if I just quickly show you what it would sound like if we didn't have reverb, and you'll see exactly what I mean by it's such a must to get this tone. So without reverb... <laughs> So it sounds pretty good, but as soon as you kick on that reverb, you really get the tone. <laughs> So I had the mix quite high because I'm sure Dick Dale just used a, a fend, an old Fender amp and had the mix quite high and that's what really gets his tone. So now let's look at the next one. <laughs> So there we go, that was Fly Dancing in Burning Room by John Mayer, which is probably one of the most iconic modern Strat and reverb songs. 
he would have probably used the two rock or maybe even a dumbo on the original recording around continuum i think that's what he was doing so on the on the sound element controller i literally just pulled the mix down a little bit so it wasn't drowning out the sound as much and you hear it more when you're hitting the stabs but again it really comes into play when you're doing those little double stop lead lines you really hear it kind of melting everything together and it sounds really cool so i'll quickly show you what the main riff sounds like without the reverb and then we'll engage the reverb so you can see how much difference it actually makes <laughs> So there you go, again, the spring reverb making up the vast majority of the sounds, and now we're gonna look at the next one. So some of you may or may not know this song, but it's probably one of the most famous intro guitar lead lines, and it's such a beautiful lead line to play as well. And again, it incorporates a great reverb tone. It's Wicked Game by Chris Isaac. So again, I had the mix a little bit higher on the Anna sounds, and I was just using the boost side of the Thorpey just to enhance the general tone a little bit. So again, if I quickly show you that opening lead line without the reverb, and then I'll kick it on so you can see and hear exactly what's going on. <laughs> Okay, so now let's look at the next song. Again, it's one that people may not know as much, but it was from a Quentin Tarantino soundtrack. So here we go. <laughs> So there we go, that was Chick Habit by April March from Death Proof by Quentin Tarantino, that's where I know it from anyway. So again, I had the mix a little bit higher on the elements and the sounds, and I had a little bit of drive coming from the Dane as well. So if I play that opening riff, you really hear it on the palm mute because you get that classic spring reverb drip. Then of course, when you do the big stabs on the E minor, you really hear the tail of the reverb. So I'll quickly play it without and then with, so you can really hear what big difference the spring reverb's making. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, so now let's look at the next song. This is going to be 16 Saltines by Jack White, which has a massive spring reverb sign. And I think it's coming from his original twin reverbs. So here we go. <laughs> So there we go, that massive spring reverb tone that we hear Jack White using. I was just using the Fallout Cloud by Thorpe FX to give us that big muff tone, and then that was going straight into the elements by Anna Sounds. This time I had the mix at about 12 o'clock, and I was rolling down the guitar in between the chords just so you could hear the tail of the reverb without any noise from the fuzz coming through. So if I quickly play it with just the Fallout fuzz, and then I'll engage the spring reverb from Anna Sounds so you can hear and see exactly what's going on. <laughs> Okay, so the next one we're going to look at is actually a Radio 1's Live Lounge cover that Arctic Monkeys did, but they kind of really took it back to like 50s and 60s music, and it has a great spring reverb time throughout, so let's check it out. <laughs> So there you go, you might recognise that cover or you might not, but it was actually a cover that the Monkeys did and the live lounge of Katie B's on a mission. Again, they really took it back to like 50s and 60s kind of surf, rock and roll music. And it's a really key thing to have a real good spring reverb for that. And we mainly hear it on the little stabs throughout the verse and it really gives us that kind of old school vibe. So if I play it without the reverb and then I'll kick it on so you can see and hear exactly what's going on. Again, I had the overdrive coming from the Dane by Thorpe FX. And then we just had the mix a tiny bit higher than usual as well. <laughs> So there we have it. That was a look at how to sound like some of my favourite songs and riffs that actually use the spring reverb and wouldn't be the same without that. There's loads of classic ones on there that are so iconic and just really would not be the same without the spring reverb as we heard throughout the video. Taking that spring reverb away at first, you might not realise how much of a difference it's making, but it really does add to the tracks. Of course, Miss Lou being one of the most famous for string reverb, as well as slow dancing in a burning room. But there's some great mentions like Wicked Game, Chick Habit, 
16 saltines by Jack White with his big first time and the reverb bouncing from his twin reverb. And then, of course, Arctic Monkey's 50s, 60s rock and roll style cover of On a Mission. Like I said, it's quite rare to get a good 100% analog spring reverb pedal system for your pedal boards. And a lot of the digital emulations just don't get anywhere near there for me, especially seeing as though I played my old Silverface twin reverb for so long, it kind of spoiled me. And then when playing digital emulations, they just don't get anywhere near there. The element by Anna sounds with the different sized tanks that you can mount to your pedal board as well as the controller for some more flexibility with your reverb sounds really comes in handy and it's such a cool system to have a real spring reverb you just cannot beat that reverb for me it's definitely one of my favorite reverb types as well as plate reverb again if you want to see my full demo of the Anna sounds elements there'll be a link up in the cards in the description and pinned in the comments let me know down in the comments some of your favorite songs that use spring reverb and how close you thought the elements got us to these iconic original tracks there's going to be affiliate links down in the description to every piece of gear i used in this video and to record my videos these do help support the channel out further so i really appreciate you guys check them out if you did like this top riffs how to sound like video please leave a like comment and subscribe and hit the little bell notification for me as well it really does help me out a lot and that way you won't miss out on my future uploads other than that go on to my channel check out some of my playlists i have plenty more lessons covers gear demos how to sound like videos and anything guitar related as always i've been harry and thanks for watching